Are you struggling to write effective and efficient PES statements for your nutrition diagnoses? When you have a clear and targeted PES statement, your nutrition interventions can be customized to the patient's unique situation. Let's break it down together. The P stands for problem. Problems utilize standardized nutrition diagnostic terminology. When choosing the problem, focus on something your nutrition intervention can improve or solve. Problems related to nutritional intake are common because they are easier for us to impact. The E stands for etiology. This is the root cause of the problem. Remember, there should only be one root cause. So keep asking why. The etiology does not use standardized terminology, so be sure to customize this for your patient's unique situation. And the S stands for signs and symptoms. The signs and symptoms are how you know the problem exists. You can list as many signs and symptoms as you need, but be as specific as possible. When you break down the parts of the PES statement, your nutrition intervention should target the etiology. And the signs and symptoms are what you will follow up with when you're monitoring the patient during your next assessment. Let's take a look at a few examples. Let's say we have a patient who presents with unintentional weight loss. She is elderly and you find out that she had a stroke about six weeks ago. She went to rehab for therapy and has been home now for about three weeks. After the stroke, she had new onset difficulty swallowing and has required a puree diet. When you assess her, she tells you that she's on a limited income and doesn't have a blender at home or any way to make pureed foods. So she mostly eats soup and crackers at mealtimes. Knowing this, what is your PES statement? Starting with the problem, there are several options. Inadequate energy intake, inadequate protein intake, unintended weight loss, inadequate oral intake, swallowing difficulty, and others. Remember, focus on a problem that you can solve or improve. How about we choose inadequate energy intake as our problem? This problem relates to nutritional intake and is something we can definitely work to improve. The next step is to determine the etiology or the root cause of the inadequate energy intake. Why is this patient experiencing inadequate energy intake? There could be lots of contributing factors such as her recent stroke, her advanced age, her inability to puree foods at home, her reliance on soup and crackers for most meals, or her difficulty swallowing. But there's only one root cause of this patient's inadequate energy intake. By addressing only one of these contributing factors, you could also improve some of the others. In this scenario, the root cause is her inability to puree foods at home. This has led to a very restrictive diet, which is not meeting her nutritional needs. The bottom line is this patient is not consuming enough calories, which has led to unintentional weight loss. The final step is to identify the signs and symptoms. Ask yourself, how do I know this problem is occurring? In the case of our patient, how do we know she is having inadequate energy intake? Yes, we can infer that based on her limited food recall, but the primary and most convincing evidence is that she has had unintentional weight loss. When writing your PES statement, you want to be as specific as you can with your signs and symptoms. So list how much weight was lost, in what time frame, and list that it was unintentional. So here's our final PES statement. Inadequate energy intake related to limited food choices at home as evidenced by unintentional weight loss of 3% in three weeks. If you'd like more information about how to link your PES statement to your nutrition intervention and use it for monitoring and evaluation, download our free webinar, Perfecting Your PES Statement.